In this classic vector problem, uh, we're going to analyze using vectors and trigonometry how a plane with a heading of 30 degrees south of east moving at 500 miles per hour is affected by a 20 mile an hour wind that's got a direction of 20 degrees south or 40 degrees south of west. I've drawn the two vectors. Um, I can't draw them to scale because uh, the wind is a 25th the magnitude of the plane. And so we draw them like this. And the way that two vectors act on each other is by calculating the resultant vector. If you remember, the resultant vector is the sum of the two vectors. And the way we sum them is we take the um, terminal point or the initial point of one and connect it with the terminal point of another. So we're going to do it like this. And that's our wind vector being moved to there. Um, and then the resultant vector, which we'll do in black, is the vector that goes from 0, 0 to the endpoint of the, the two vectors put together. So we want to find out what is the resultant vector. Um, we want to find the magnitude. We want to find the um, direction. When you do this, the way we add vectors together, not graphically, is by adding their coordinates. It's by far the easiest way to do it. So we need to find the coordinate of each one of these uh, original vectors. And the way that we do that is we use the um, simple formula, which is the magnitude times the cosine of the angle and the magnitude times the sine of the angle. And the angle always has to be an angle with the uh, horizontal. Um, so in the case of this problem, they're both the 30 degrees and the 40 degrees are angles with the horizontal, so we don't have to worry about it. But if you're not, you've got to find the angle with the horizontal. And then it's the magnitude because if you draw in, like for instance on this one, if we wanted to find the x and the y coordinate, then we would do the cosine of 40 equals x over 20, the adjacent, which is x, and then 20, which is the hypotenuse. And then if you multiply by 20, you get 20 cosine 40. And then the other thing you have to remember is that you've got to choose the right signs. So in our problem, if we want to do the, the vector that is the um, x, um, or is the wind, then we're going to say, well, using this, the magnitude of 20 times the cosine of the angle. But then, because it's in the third quadrant, it's got to be negative because it, your x value is going to be negative at that point. And then your y value is also going to be negative, and it's just 20 sine of 40. Now, you could go through and get calculate those, but because we're going to add them together, we're just going to use our calculator to actually go through and calculate them. For the plane, same deal. It's just going to be the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. For the same reason, you can prove this by just looking at the, the right triangles, right? knowing that this is x and this is y, and using cosine and sine. We're not going to do that. We're just going to trust our formulas here. The x-coordinate's positive for this particular problem, so it's going to be 500 cosine of 30, and then 500 sine of 30. But the, the y value is negative for that particular problem. So now we add them together. We take our calculator. And the way you add vectors is you add the x-coordinate, so we add that to this, and that gets us a resultant vector of uh, 417. Uh, I have my students round it to the nearest hundredth, and so to make sure that we are accurate to that point, I make sure I have them write at least three or four decimal places after that. So it's going to be 417.691813, uh, which makes sense considering the problem. And then the y value, which needs to be negative, if you th think about where this is, it's negative 262.855. 7522. And again, all I did to find the x coordinate is I typed in this, negative 20 cosine 40, and I added 500 cosine 30. That gave me the x coordinate. And then I did the same thing with the y like that. So now we have the coordinates of the re resulting vector, so we need to find ground speed. Ground speed is what the plane looks like it's heading. Um, you know, the, the way a plane works is the pilots say we want to go, um, we're going to point our plane this direction and then the wind's going to blow us off course and the person on the ground doesn't know where the pilots and tried to point the plane they can only see where the plane's actually going so the ground speed is what it looks like in comparison to the ground and that's just finding the magnitude and for any x y um, vector the magnitude is always just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared 
So I'm just going to take this squared plus this squared, and then I'm going to take the square root of both of those and find out that the magnitude, which in turn is actually the ground speed of this new vector, is going to be 493.52. The direction, well, whenever you have an xy, if you want to find out what the angle is, then it's always going to be the y is always going to be the, whole, the vertical and the x is the horizontal. And so, for instance, if you think about this, y is over here, opposite, x is adjacent, which is tangent. And so you're always going to do tangent. And then you do just you have the absolute value, right? The tangent of the angle is always going to be the absolute value of the y over x. So in my case, it's going to be the absolute value of this 262.85 dot, 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 over 417.69183. And then the way I solve that is take the inverse tangent of this. And so I'll type in the 262.855, dot, 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 divided by 417, get a value, and then take the inverse tangent of that. And so you could think about it like this, the inverse tangent of this over this into my calculator. And that comes up with the direction of 32.18 degrees, but the 32.18 degrees is this angle right here, and that angle is south of east, so it's 32.18 degrees south of east. And then if you want the drift angle, the drift angle is just the how much off course the plane went. Well, the course plane was originally going 30 degrees south of east, now going 32.18, and so the difference between 32 and 30 is just the 2.18 degrees that the plane drifts off course. Again, it's so important to know this, making sure that you know that the angle is with horizontal, so it's with the west and the east um, axis, and then also that you have to put the right signs in. For instance, this one had x and y both negative, and this one had a y negative. And then, once you know that and you get your coordinates, you add them together, then you need to know these two um, which are the way that you find the direction and magnitude of a vector when you're given the coordinates.